it's, you know, you were raised in a reductionist scientific tradition. Yes. And Dr. Suzuki, this would not be the kind of thing that would have gone down well <laughs> in, a, in a PhD oral in your youth, would it? No, I remember once when I was a young assistant professor and I said, well, I don't think, you know, if you learn all of the components of a nucleus and of the cell, we will still not understand what life is. And right away, this kid jumped up and said, you're a vitalist. You believe there's some magic spirit. It gives life. It's different. And all I was saying is, I think the whole cannot be predicted by, from the sum of its parts. That was heretical back in the 60s. The idea that dominated, especially my area of genetics, was called reductionism, where you focus on a part of nature, a subatomic particle, an atom, a molecule, a cell, a, a tissue, a, an animal, a population. At different levels, you focus on a part and measure that part. And of course, it's been a very powerful approach. We've liberated the energy from atoms and we've done amazing things. Well, Mr. Physicist, what happens if you take, knowing that, what happens when you take two atoms of hydrogen, combine them together with one atom of oxygen, and make a molecule of water? What are, what, is the, what are the properties of water? And the physicist has to say, I don't have a clue. When you combine those two elements, there are what we now call emergent properties. Properties that emerge out of the combination that cannot be predicted by the sum of, by the individual parts. That still large parts of science ha have not accepted or understood. Biology should be the area that, is, that sees the bigger picture, but we've become very, very reductionist.